Hello, I'm Professor Richard Toy and welcome to another Talking Empire podcast. With me is Dr. Mark Palin and today we're going to be talking talking about V.I. Lenin's pamphlet Imperialism, the Highest Stage of Capitalism. I believe it was written in 1916 and published in 1917. Now, Mark, um, what, 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 what were the ideas that inspired Lenin to write this pamphlet? Well, it's, it's worth keeping in mind that Marx himself never mentions imperialism in his work. This is something that's growing out of this crisis as far as the Marxists are concerned of the early 1900s. They were trying to make sense of the scramble for Africa or in the case of Lenin who's writing in the early years of the First World War why the imperial powers, why the imperial Western capitalist powers were now at each other's throats. Um, And so this is a sort of adaptation of Marxist ideas into these theories of imperialism. Um, but Lenin isn't just coming up with this all of his own. He he turns. He he's very open about these influences that are uh, that he is is using to develop his own theories. Uh, J. A. Hobson and his imperialism, a study in 1902, is very influential. As is uh, Rudolf Hilferding's Finance Capital, the latest stage of capitalism, mm-hmm. which came out in 1910. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was actually the original subtitle of. Of, of Lenin's own. He changed it to the highest stage of, of capitalism, which is, I think, a really important change of, of terms there. But uh, yeah, So he's leaning on these, these other theories of imperialism that were also being written in these early 1900s uh, to develop his own theory. So, I mean, Lenin was actually quite well read in terms of the sources that he was, he was getting hold of and reading stuff in, uh, I imagine, English and, and possibly other languages as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he, he was, um, I think he wrote the introduction to Bukharin's uh, 1915 work, also developing these theories of imperialism, and clearly aware of Hilferding uh, and, and Hobson, among others. Yes, he, he seems quite well read in the, in the literature. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, for how did Lenin then define imperialism? It's there's there's a simple definition that he gives, and then there's a very long definition that he gives. Uh, the, the, he defines it very simply as the monopoly stage of capitalism. Uh, and I think the stage is a very important aspect of that, that, that he developed much like Marx, as well as Adam Smith, this idea of the stages of development of capitalism, uh, obviously with imperialism being the highest stage. And, and so within that uh, definition is this more complex development of it. Uh, it's the shift as he sees it from the mid 19th century industrial capitalist system, which is more peaceful, free market approach, uh, to what he, he defines as this rise of bank capital and the confluence of bank capital with industrial capital leading to financial capital, uh, this financial oligopoly that he sees as sort of the root of this monopolistic need for new markets Mm -hmm. to the imperialism of today. Uh, He develops this further by saying that this then leads to the divvying up of the so-called free land uh, throughout the globe. This is partly to try to explain why this scramble for Africa and, and uh, the opening of China and other parts of the globe are happening and why these Western powers are doing it. And then this ultimately leads to the point where uh, there's no more land to be divvied up and we still have this mounting need to export surplus capital which leads to the imperial powers turning on each other. And this is how in many ways Lenin is trying to explain why the First World War broke out. This mm-hmm. is a conflict of empires owing to the inherent nature, the inevitable nature of, of the capitalist system at this point. Now, here's a kind of a counterfactual question um, with respect to really sort of the, what the significance of Lenin's theory is. Now, obviously, in a way, everything that Lenin wrote was significant because he was, he was Lenin and he was a key figure in the Russian Revolution. But from the theoretical point of view, just imagine that you know, he'd been kind of run over by a bus shortly before the October Revolution, um, but had nonetheless published this pamphlet. I mean, how significant would this be as, in an intellectual sense, as actually pushing the, the theory of empire forward? It is a pamphlet. Uh, in, that, in that sense, it was actually much more accessible, I think, to more people uh, and much more engaging to more people. It was written to be uh, accessible. Um, he's really relying heavily, though, on much more dense, much more sophisticated tracks like Rudolf Hilferding's uh, Finance Capital in 1910 um, to develop these much more accessible ideas. 
whether or not this would have been nearly as influential if he hadn't done what he did with the Bolshevik Revolution is, is, is an important one that we can't really know. Um, but we do know that, that these ideas were influential. Uh, you can see this in the development of this idea of neo-colonialism. Uh, Kwame Nkrumah in 1965 terms this, he, what does he call it? He calls it neo-colonialism, the last stage of capitalism. And it's a direct reference, a playoff, essentially 50 years to the day. Mm -hmm. uh, the publication of this comes out, um, and, and this critique of this post-Second World War international order that, that Nkrumah lays out is very much relying on um, Lenin's ideas of imperialism. Okay, so 50 years after that, how significant do you think that Lenin's ideas remain? Do they still have any purchase, uh, or are they merely kind of the object of historical curiosity? I think, I think if you'd asked that 10 years ago, uh, the answer would have been different. But I think what we're seeing because of the Great Recession, uh, because of the continued militarism and interventionism of, of Western powers uh, throughout the so-called Third World, um, we're seeing a resurgence of what we might consider Marxist, Leninist theories of imperialism. Probably more sophisticated, more updated. I mean, he got a lot wrong. Um, but I, uh, you can see that influence certainly still in, in these new, uh, what we might call neo-Marxist theories of imperialism that have arisen in the last five or so years. Mark Palin, thank you very much. Thank you.